Hi, I'm Attachment Specialist Adam Lane Smith, and today I want to talk to you about the four and a half secrets to improving your dating life. Once you learn these, everything else is going to make better sense, and you're going to enjoy your dating life a lot more. Let's jump right into them. Number one, learn to ask more questions. Most people are not curious enough on dates, they, or they spend too much time talking about themselves. One of the biggest concerns with people who are insecure is that they are going to have to carry the conversation. They're going to have to think of clever things to say, think of cool topics, think about how they can introduce things into the environment, into the conversation, and be really interesting and fascinating. I'm going to tell you this. The secret to making other people enjoy a conversation is to make it about them in a good way. It's to be curious about them. It's to treat them as though they're fascinating. It's to treat them as though you want to learn about them. By asking questions, you're saying, I am interested in you. You are interesting as a person. You're pretty cool. I think you're fun, and I am going to keep investing time and energy into learning about you. By asking questions, you are sending the right signals. So ask more questions. And this doesn't have to be like the Spanish Inquisition with the thumbscrews kind of thing. Ask questions. Think about them. Respond briefly in a statement or two. Don't go on a gigantic tirade about yourself and then, hey, how about this? What do you think about this? And then completely disregard them and then just start rolling with your own. Build from theirs. Maybe you introduce a sentence or two about yourself. Hey, you know, I agree with that. I have a little experience because blah, blah, blah. And then you follow up with another question that stacks on to that first question. You don't ask them about the dog and their dog and then go ask them about their work life. You ask them about their dog and then ask them another question based on something they just asked. Ask more questions. Your dates will go a lot better. People will think you are interesting and they will enjoy spending more time in your presence. A lot easier to get a second date if you spend your time talking and asking questions and, and talking about the other person rather than talking about yourself or just randomly coming up with topics because that nervousness comes off too. Um, number two, secret number two, get a little more serious, especially on the first date, especially on the first date and especially in the first couple of dates, be a little more serious. Dates don't have to just be completely random, mindless fun for the first seven months to convince the other person that you're fun to be around. That's what a lot of dating is, is it's, let's just be completely fun. Look at me. I have no inhibitions. I am so fun. Everything is great. And then seven months hits and it's, oh, wait, no, I've been faking who I am this whole time and I'm actually this other person, but now you're trapped. That's what modern dating is. Don't do that. Be a little more serious. Have a little more serious discussions. I always tell people on the first date, tell people what you're looking for. Hey, you know what? Just so we're clear, I, I am looking for marriage eventually. I'm not telling you we have to get married tomorrow, but I am looking for marriage eventually. I'd like to have kids. I'd like to have, you know, this or this and this, just so we know, so we don't waste any time or we at least align on those big pieces. Great conversation. That's a way to get serious without being overly serious. Again, you're not, the point isn't to get married or engaged on the first date. The point is to have the conversations and make sure you're at least aligned. What this is going to do is weed out all the insecure people who can't go that deep and say, oh, it's really weird to have those conversations. We shouldn't be talking about that at least until the sixth year of our relationship. Because those people say that at a massive, massive cope for those people who are afraid to go into those topics and afraid that their answers will break up their relationship. So they will make you feel like the weird person for saying, hey, you should be talking about these things and getting a little serious. And number three, segues into it, ties, ties into it pretty good. Number three, focus on goals. What are your goals? Now this doesn't mean you, have to, you don't have to sit down at the first meeting, at the first date and call it a meeting with a binder open and a stopwatch and say, okay, we need to hit exactly these. No, don't, don't, don't do that. What are your goals? If you are wanting to become a couple, what is the purpose of becoming a couple? And that sounds silly because a lot of people say it's just to be happy. But consider this, just being happy as a couple means both of you are just going to get together and you are just going to binge Netflix and eat fast food for the next 60 years until one of you dies and then the other one will sit there alone until they die too. If that's the goal of the couple, that's, that's like pure hedonism. If that's the goal of the couple, okay, but that is still a goal. It's still a goal to be comfortable and to be content for to, together for the rest of your lives. That is still a goal. Odds are good you have some goals beyond that. And talk about those too. 
Talk about them. Make sure they align. It makes you interesting. Having goals actually makes you interesting. Goes back to what? Number one, asking questions. If you ask questions about the other person and their answers are, uh, I don't know. I like flowers. I just kind of like to look at them. If that's the, I think that's not that interesting. If they're like, yeah, no, I, I have this business idea. I'd like to build a business. I'd like to help some people. I'd like to, that makes them interesting. It makes you interesting too. Goals are crucial, especially if you're a man dating, because women hear those goals and say, okay, this is somebody I could help them with these goals. Women hear that and say, wow, he's not just a lazy schmuck. He actually has a plan for his life. Men hear those goals that women have and they're like, oh, wow, that aligns pretty well with my goals. We could work on this together. It makes you interesting to the other person. It makes you seem like a person instead of just kind of like an object sitting there. Goals. Goals are what differentiate us from objects because living creatures have, have goals. State your goals and talk about them. See where they align. Even if they don't perfectly align, talk about them. It'll at least make you interesting and it may show you that you are better matched than you thought you were. Number four, stick to your principles. Do not do or say anything that violates your principles, at least on the, especially on the first date, especially in any of those dates, because at the seven month mark, it's called the end of the honeymoon phase, and the average of seven months, people start having problems because they have faked and violated the principles. They faked a lot of their personality and their behaviors for those first seven months. And now all of a sudden, oh wait, no, I've secretly always hated that. Oh no, I have a problem with this. Oh now I'm mad, oh no. And, and they blow it up and all of a sudden they've been faking it and now the other person's mad and then the other person says, what the heck is going on? But both of them have been faking it. It's a really bad circumstance. And a lot of people just hate themselves. If they violate the principles, you hate yourself. A lot of young, insecure young women sleep with people on the first date or the second date or the third date, even if they don't want to, because they feel like it's expected. They feel like that's all they can do to hook someone's interest. They feel like that's the only thing that makes them interesting enough to be in a relationship. It's the only thing they can offer. Don't do that. Don't do that because... Number one, you're going to hate yourself. Number two, you're going to have a huge problem down the line when it comes out that you've been fake. And number three, people with principles want you to stick to your principles. People with no principles will be upset that you have stuck to your principles because you are reflecting badly on them and making them insecure about violating their own principles. So don't violate your principles just to appease people who violate their principles. Stick to your principles and principled people will like you more and will spend more time with you. That's pretty easy. Pretty easy. Figure out what your principles are. They don't have to be exactly like mine. And then do them. <laughs> Stick to them. Stick to them. People will respect you more. And you will have a better experience on dates because you're not violating your principles and hating yourself just to go on a date. And the one half. I said one half. Four and a half. So that's four. Four and a half. Spend more time with friends. Stay, more, stay with friends. Especially during dates. Group dates... It sounds, oh, that sounds cheesy. Oh, that sounds stupid. That's one of those, you know, old time 70s things people used to know. Go on group dates. Go on group dates, especially first date, second date, third date, fourth date. Date rape statistics alone support that this is a much safer idea. Don't go off with strangers, especially the first few times. Most predators won't stick with you for the first four, five, six dates most, especially in circles where they know people. They aren't going to prey on people usually in their own social circles. Stay with friends. And added bonus, you get to see what they act like in front of strangers, you, and in front of other people that they know. And that's great because then you get to see a balance of how they act. Are they, they can't present their perfect image in front of you because they've also got this other person who's known them for 20 years. Makes it a lot easier. Then you can see who someone is a little bit more. And your social circle, your friends, and their friends, their mutual groups or whatever, they can call them out on things. If they're like, hey, no, I, uh, you know, secretly, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, for a job, I, I'm Batman. I'm actually Batman. I rescue orphans from chemical fires and I fight the Joker. And their, their family's going to be going, like, <laughs> Dude, you you sweep up at an amusement park. Calm down. They can they can call me call you call call them out on those things. They can guard you from those lies. They can guard you from the half truths. They can call it out, and they can stop you from doing that too. Having your friends there is a great option that relieves the stress, makes sure nothing illegal happens, takes care of all of you, takes care of social things and social interactions, gives you more data. 
gives you all of this stuff. So optional fourth, not really that optional, but I greatly encourage it. Do group dates, do group dates. If nothing else, your relationship will grow with a group and then you will have a built-in friend system to then hang out with as a couple instead of feeling like you both have to retreat from your individual friends and don't know who to hang out with. That'll help too. Four and a half ways. Ask more questions, get serious, focus on your goals, keep your principles, and stay with your friends. Four and a half. You can do this. This will make dating a lot more fun. Give it a try. Leave me comments. If you think these are horrible, if you think they're smart, if you've had, if, if these four and a half principles would have saved you some heartache in the past, leave me a comment and let me know. Comments help. Like and subscribe if you would do that, please. That boosts this channel a big, big amount. That means other people are going to come in and see it. Other people can get help. Other people can have better dates. Hey, maybe someone you're going to date is going to say, hey, I have these four and a half ideas that... That'd be kind of cool, actually. Um, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching this. I hope this has been helpful. Please use at least one of these. On your next date, use at least one of these. Stick to them. You don't have to get all four and a half perfect. That'd be ideal, but you don't have to. Even just one. Even just say, hey, yeah, you know what? I, I'm weakest in that spot and that makes me unhappy. I'm going to stick with that one and give that a shot. Do it. If it's, uh, you know, getting serious, having the more serious talks, because you've tried to stay away from that all this time, get a little more serious. Talk about your goals a little bit more. That'll make you a little more interesting. And a lot of us, a lot of us need to ask more questions anyway. <laughs> Not just in dating, but in all relationships. So there you go. Thank you. I'm attachment specialist Adam Lane Smith. Thanks for watching.